Hey guys, welcome back to Human Echo. Um, what do you mean six years ago? I mean, I was still in elementary school back then, right? It's pretty unfair to expect me to remember everything, don't you think? True, especially because we were so young, we've grown a lot in these six years. If I hadn't been introduced, I might not even have remembered you. Really? I figured he was battler right away, even when he opened his mouth, I was sure. You know, I just met him for the first time, didn't know him six years ago. That's right, Mariah's almost one three years old then. Well, the same goes for me. I only knew Mariah when she was three years old, and since she's grown so big, of course I wouldn't recognize her. If the last girl had gone out to the beach to walk around, talk, and take it easy, our parents were apparently having a suspic uh, suspicious, complicated discussion, so we ended up leaving them behind. Well, just as I guess with the start of the conversation focused on me since I've been away for six years. So you've gotten really tall. I wouldn't call myself short, but your height really surprised me. Now, so I remember well that Battler Summer was like six years ago, but I was surprised even so. Yeah, seriously. I can hardly believe that this is the same Battler we knew back then. I'm surprised I don't even remember about it. My memory's all hazy. Yeah, I'll bet. Looks like it's talk take, take, taking you a while to remember us. You know, that hurts a bit. Come on, that was six years, ago, six years ago, right? I'm the one who has it bad being forced to remember. Are you saying that you can't remember well because it was six years ago? I can't remember it as clearly as if it happened yesterday. Well, your memory's good after all. You remember the kind of things Battler did and said back then pretty clearly, don't you? Come to think of it, that's right. Sharing memory can be incredible when you least expect it. Ooh, I'm horrible at remembering. I remember fun things, but can't remember boring things at all. Ooh. We all laughed saying that everyone was like that. Shannon, by the way, what was what was Battler like six years ago? I remember, remember anything interesting episodes? Let's see, I'm sure that he said something like this and he left. I'll be back, see you again. I'll surely come for you riding a white horse. Yeah, stop it, it's so embarrassing. Yeah, <laughs> sounds just like something you say. Yeah, I remember, you always used to be full of those stupid lines, Battler. Wow. <laughs> you only know something like something Battler kind of wanted to say back then. Ew, embarrassing, is that embarrassing? Yeah, horribly embarrassing. Alright, I'm sure that in your middle school you'll want to say embarrassing stuff like that. When that happens, make sure you write it down and read it three times before saying it out loud. If you don't, you'll definitely regret it. So everyone has to pass through that pitiful period, that's right. That's how you learn your place, learn shame, and become an adult. Yeah, it's hard to be bittersweet things that one does in adolescence as they transition to becoming adults. A memory you just want to forget. After all, this was all stuff I'd let slip out without thinking, so I didn't think I didn't remember the words exactly. But now those words were being recited to me; they were embarrassing as all hell. I only recently came to a stand of sweetness and was working hard to avoid such careless outbursts. But I guess I was just born with the habit of speaking without thinking. There's nothing I can do about it. Shannon, do you remember other embarrassing stuff? Yeah, so I remember a few other things, but since it looks like the person in question was to forget them, I think I'll refrain from saying any more. To be really honest, I don't remember this at all. Please don't make me remember. Ooh, Shannon's bullying Battler. Ooh, he can't. You shouldn't bully people. Ahaha, <laughs> she isn't really bullying him. Let's leave it at that, okay? But Shannon, you'll have to tell me all about us the time when Battler isn't around. It sounds pretty interesting. Yes, yeah, certainly. No, you can, Shannon Shannon. For a while, George Eddie left. I mean, it's still warming up. Shannon, Shannon will tell him about more of my basic misspeaks. George looked like he was flirting with Shannon, but he had seemed somewhat open and frank about it. He was always that way with his cousins, but he usually took on your reserved gentlemanly attitude when he came in contact with the servants. When I thought about it, I got the feeling he was being a bit over friendly, which seemed strange. Mariah started scribbling in the sand with a stick as George and Shannon 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 joined in. This let me and Jessica off to the side, so I asked her secretively, Hey Jessica, is George and Shannon going out with Shannon Shannon? Oh, well, how'd you guess? Battler, you got a keener eye for people than I thought. Oh, what? I was just kidding, but they're actually going out. Shh, your voice is too loud. It looks like they're keeping a secret for now, okay? It'd be better if nobody found out, especially Anne Eva. I see, in love with the servant, huh? Yeah, but since when? Ooh, I guess a lot could happen in six years, but yeah. And if he's an amazing person, Shannon and Chance be kind of brave, so they might make a pretty good match. Actually, six years ago, six years ago I remember taking notice of her just a little bit. I see she really fits well with George and Nikki. Nothing I can do about that. Goodbye, my fleeting first love of six years ago. Once you mean that the collection of embarrassing lines, Shane Shane, how it just held back on, probably had something to do with that. Oh, I can't 
take it. How long have they been going out? And that depends on what you call going out, but I think it's been at least a year. But if you cut the time, they both had one set of feelings. It'd probably be several years before I realized the two of them are separating. Alright, sorry guys, I heard something that scared the hell out of me, so... Before I realized that the two of them had separated themselves from that group and were walking down the beach talking about something, they looked calm, and rather than a light relationship between the two lovers, it looked more like a serious one, and so they had already engaged. Six years ago, huh? That's a long time. What did those six years mean to me? I was just gotten taller. It was just a waste of time. Six years I spent off suddenly fighting with my dad. What about you, Battler? You got a girlfriend? I wonder, there's a few girls that I have fun with, but there's no, only one. I guess I'm just a kid. I think it's more fun to be nosy with a large group of people than being alone with one person. Ah, uh, so you, Battler, but take your relationship with your females friend seriously. When girls can get wrong expressions or form a group, it can be scary, I know. They might be having secret feuds over you behind your back with people getting hurt or crying. That's so weird. I think I mean we're getting the same bit of advice from one of the girls in my class just last week. What's this all about? Why can't anyone just have fun together? Do people really want to couple up that much? It's probably because you never found a partner like that battler. Well, you might want to run into someone sooner or later. You just gotta wait patiently. What? If someone so like you already found a partner like that, what about you? Have you gotten your boyfriend? Huh? Me? No, or why? <laughs> Come on, that reaction is so easy to understand. From the looks of it, there's some boy you're thinking about, but you haven't been able to confess to him yet, something like that. No, um, that's not him. Uh, shut up. Who cares about that? I'm the one who brought this up to the subject. Why are you yelling at me now? Women are creatures who always ask questions and yet almost never answer them. What cruel creatures, seriously? Well, um, I did try to confess once. Well, um, I stuck up pretty badly. Did you get in? I'm sorry. You know, um, well, my feelings were just on one side and they didn't really know how to respond, I guess. It was like they didn't view me that way at all. Well, I can understand that. You talk like a man after all. If you don't have a bit more graceful, you won't be able to catch a boy's interest. Is it really the way I speak? Really that bad? Mm, well, I'm um, how you talk is and everything, but when people like you, you usually have a rough style of speech. Suddenly, you start working hard to talk more normally. There are, there are guys out there whose heart all skip up when they see how determined you are. Is that really true? I see. Yeah, just because suddenly start talking more meekly, and then her face is slightly red. I see. Even though her confession didn't go well, it looks more like she still hasn't given up. But still, I get it. After saying no close, George and Nikki and Shen Shen have gotten out, so I kind of want to find a girlfriend. Six years. Six years of puberty are pretty important, and they went by pretty fast. As the typhoon approached, the clouds grew steadily grayer, but even so, I had this really refreshing feeling. Maybe I'll try thinking more seriously about the opposite sex, more than just the one size of their boots. By the way, it looks like George and Nikki is going out with a servant. Don't tell me it's the same for you. Oh, what? Why? Why would you think that? Come and think of it, that kid Kenny couldn't agree just in the rose garden you were covering for him pretty intensely, considering he was just a little awkward without talking. No, that's not. Oh, I know you're getting paranoid. Then tell me just one thing right now. Is the boy you're at or within one kilometer of this spot? Well, about that, my I wonder. Kenny Gunn was the only boy on this island now who could possibly become her boyfriend. So, judging by her reaction, it was right on. I didn't think of the Ushio Mia family as a noble family, but love with their servant. I would have a dream that two pairs of Romeo and Juliet would be right next to me. And he would probably become an obstacle to George and Nikki and Shen Chen's love. If any of you ever learned that Shen Chen was the partner of her only beloved son, she'd probably scream at her for trying to steal away her precious George. In relationship between Jessica and Kenneka, would probably be just as full of difficulties, and Natsuhi was also very strict about that kind of thing. After all, Jessica's husband would probably become the head of the Ushimiya family in the future. Because that person had once been a servant and working for the family, well, things would get complicated. Well, love is a different for every person. As long as you're with someone who's fun to be around, does anything else matter? When two people pair up, they don't need anyone else's permission as long as they accept each other. Worrying about that, what your parents or family will say means you've already lost. Don't forget that you better not go out with someone who mixed feelings. I can't believe you're saying something so philosophical sounding when you haven't been in love. Don't treat love like a matter of profit and loss. It's about heart. That's all I have to say. Well, then, see you again. Have a nice day. <laughs> George and his son, Shen and Shen, listen, listen, this guy said another one of those lines, I didn't say anything, I didn't have to say anything, wow, don't make fun of me, don't make fun of me, oh, I heard it, see you again, see you again, for a while we forgot that wind was getting stronger, I played around on the beach. I grew a lot these past six years, I've been able to celebrate my youth and me with all my cousins, it was truly refreshing, it's a bit late now, but I realized that I should have gotten back together with anyone a lot sooner and returned to the Ushiromiya family. 
It sure is nice to have all the cousins together every once in a while. Ooh, I like it too. It's really fun when all the cousins get together. That's right. We were already old enough. It's not like we couldn't meet each other, even when our parents aren't around. It might not have been a bad idea to gather the cousins together and play every once in a while. That's a good plan. Maybe we should have a chance like this uh, next time we get a chance. Yeah, I agree. I hope we cousins can stay friends forever. Hey, hey, if you make such a big deal of it, you almost make it sound like relatives usually end up hating each other. <laughs> George and Gaines just could laugh, but it felt just a little strange. Did I see something wrong? Due to better, our parents made quiet expressions of tired faces every once, every once in a while during a boat ride at the airport. Maybe I should have kept that to myself. You're right. It's just like Jessica said. Let's always be friends with each other. Ooh, me too. We're all friends. That's right. Yeah. We'll always be together. We'll always be friends. Hee hee hee. Man, we've been saying some pretty embarrassing stuff. I feel kind of awkward. But I think it's very important. People are all creatures who find it very hard to stay together, much less remain friends unless they truly desire it. That's right. You really can't take everyone being friendly for granted. Ooh, I wish I know said that happiness won't be granted unless everyone believes in it. That's true. Maybe some magic exists in the power of belief. If we all believe in it, I'm sure it will bring us happiness. Alright, well, if we're doing some embarrassing stuff already, let's all sort of believe in this together, okay? That will always be friendly and that will always be happy. Like hell, we'll end up like our parents, as if we'd ever search for each other's weaknesses going up to grandfather's fortune. Okay, we'll always be friendly and happy. I still believe in that. No matter how much we cut us try to nostalgically have fun, dark clouds continue to approach Rokinjima. I wonder if the typhoon will pass and let us to see let us see the clear skies before we leave this land. Who cares about the way our parents are planning? Who cares about the inheritance and the honor of our old family? As youthful as we were, we were renewing our old friendship. We were all believed together that we could find happiness. That's why I want this pair of days to end without anything weird happening and peace and happiness and calmly. No, I don't. Just want them to end. Please let them end. Let them in. Oh, what's up, Beatrice? Anyway, yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Damn it. Don't show up. Don't appear. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Sorry to keep you waiting. I finally prepared a new game. Come, let's begin this tale of tragedy. Come to me, winds, rain, typhoon. Could this line off in the real world? Throw a Kojima into another realm, into the spirit world, into a world of fantasy. Oh, man, come on. I mean, it doesn't really have to send it to another realm. Just make a bad typhoon that makes escape impossible. So, you know. And I'll start tell repeat it for the third time. However, to an endless wish, what did it matter whether it was the first, second, or third time? It probably didn't matter at all. After all, this was a tale of fantasy, endlessly repeated until the match was settled. Would a battler surrender first, or would a witch? The sky grew dark and cloudy, and rain, rain and wind were summoned together and became a typhoon. Mariah could be seen in the rose garden, paying no mind to the rain that had started falling. Going around a circle, searching for that single rose that should have been marked. Not here, not here, my rose. How we marked this in here. Ooh, ooh. My eyes just really remember that the rose had been in the flower bed right here, and yet it wasn't anymore. She didn't know what to do with her irritation at not being able to find something that should have been there, and running it bitterly, she couldn't help but keep going back and forth in circles around the same spot. She was acting almost as though she'd be able to see it if she looked at a different angle, but even though she did that, there was no way to find something that wasn't there. The wind grew increasingly strong, and the rain turned to cold, large drops. There's no way even Mari would fail to notice this. However, she couldn't find a rose here. It would surely disappear forever. Mari believed that. The feeling spurred on to her to keep searching for a rose that she had no chance of finding. Just then, the cold drops of rain tormenting Mari were suddenly blocked. Ooh. When Mari raised her head, she, and she did. She saw an umbrella there protecting her from the rain. And the one holding out the umbrella was the witch she admired, Beatrice. Beatrice, what are you doing so frantically in the middle of all this, Ryan? You could have catch a cold like this. Even witches have to care for their own health. I can't find my rose. Ooh. No matter how many times I searched, even though it should have been there, I can't find it. Mariah told Beatrice about how there had been a slightly unhealthy, pitiful rose, and that she was sure they had marked it. Oh, so you can't find it. If you're a witch apprentice, you should use magic to search for the rose. I believe that searching with just your eyes don't be nearly enough. Ooh, I can't find it. I did my best to try to search with magic, but I can't find it. I think practicing your magic is a very good thing, but it might be a little too much for you with all this wind and rain. And I'm going to lend you some special power. Concern for once to suppose is also one of teacher's duties. 
the thank you, Beatrice. Mariah's face, which had been full of sadness until just now, split open into a grin. Mariah knew she knew there was nothing but nothing Beatrice Magic couldn't do. So she was sure that Beatrice would be able to find the rose easily, even though Mariah couldn't. Beatrice closed her eyes slightly, acting as though she was listening for something and all this wind and rain. Then she heard it, opened her eyes and spoke. Hmm. All things in this world are transitory. Too bad, Mariah. It seems your rose couldn't withstand all this wind and rain. Ew, then my rose. It was uprooted by the wind and is no longer of this world. Ew. Beatrice, I said this so it was quite reasonable. There was nothing odd about the flower being broken off at the stem and the strong wind. However, Mariah couldn't accept this and barely gave a little pitch to my own. No. Oh? No, 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 it's my rose. My rose won't come back. No, I'll bring it back to life with my magic. Beatrice teaches me how to arrive a rose of magic. Ha. Huh. It's much too early for an apprentice like you to learn the hidden art of endless magic. Know your place. Ooh. Mariah wiped the taste from her eyes full of regret. Beatrice shook her shoulders and chuckled at Mariah's pitiful expression. Very well, I will lend you my power, the hidden art that can revive a rose. Really? Indeed. Well, then concentrate the power of your heart. Close your eyes, forget the rain, forget the wind, and search for the soul of the wandering rose with the highest of your heart. Ooh, when I closed her eyes, and she repeated Beatrice's song like words. Come try to remember, rose, what form did you have? Come try to remember, rose, what form did you have? Don't look, don't listen, and believe. Release the power of your soul from the cage of flesh and prison. That's it. Good. And when Mariah was concentrating her power, her eyes tightly shut, so all glitter, golden butterflies began to dance. What was this the manifestation of the magical power Mariah held? Lost soul of the rose, gather into one, remember your form. Come, gather, remember. The glitter of the gold butterflies began to straighten, and their numbers increased. And then Beatrice raised a finger up to the sky and began to gather at the tip of the finger. This was a miracle of the golden magic. The gold butterfly began to condense into a single dazzling grain of gold. It was a single glittering gold seed. It rolled on the tip of Beatrice's finger, budded into a golden sprout, and opened to a golden leaf. It slowly fell from that fingertip, sank into the mud of the flower bed, and began to grow steadily. Mariah, who admired her magic and the witch, really wanted to see this fantastical sight. However, as an apprentice, Mariah was still not qualified to see it. Now she was probably afraid that if she opened her eyes to look, the power she had concentrated in her heart would be cut off and the magic would be lost. Therefore, Beatrice was the only one who permitted to witness this golden miracle, was the only witch the sole master of many miracles. Then a fully grown rose bloomed, creating one golden flower, and when Beatrice poked it with her finger in just the right way, the gold color sparkled. Sparkle scattered just as if the golden soap bubble had popped, and what remained was a single beautiful rose. Hmm, it looks like you remember the splendid rose. However, if we just leave that mixed in with these other roses, you won't be able to tell it apart. Shall I perform one last service? Beatrice, for the sake of her cute printing suit, was mourning even more now in concentration, decided to use one bit more magic. When she stuck her fingers, a single gold butterfly appeared, fluttered around, and lit on the flower that had just been revived. Then it suddenly burst open and disappeared, becoming gold, golden lace marking the rose. That will do, Mariah. You may open your eyes now. Ooh, where's with the rose? It's not here. Not here. Not over here. Not over there. Look, I marked it with golden lace. Well, you did. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Beato. Thank you, Beato. I want to become a witch quickly, great rich like you. And you can. Long ago, I too wish for that instantly, just as you do, and I've attained that level. Mariah was ec ecstatic over the revived rose, clapping her hands and jumping around joy. Watching that picture, she also smiled, looking fairly pleased. By now, I can breathe. I can break and repair any soul if I try not just think of... Okay, by now I can break and repair any soul if I try, not just that of a rose, and kill and revive as I pleased. Come the barrier of the storm and uh, has now sealed Rokinjima off from the natural world. Now is the time for the Golden Witch of Beatrice to descend and it's an endless witch. Beatrice pulled from her pocket an envelope with the family crest, the one winged eagle, and gave it to Mariah. Mariah frolicked around at being selected to be the witch's messenger. 
So, okay, so I've come to join in on your fun once more. My preparations are already complete. What have you? Have you prepared enough coins to bet in tonight's game? Of course, I'm fully prepared, Beatrice. I've been assembled a plethora of pieces. I'm ready both physically and mentally, so then let us make that tick. All you gains should be returned to you in the end. Come, take it. Kazo flung the window of his study open and wide, took the valuable golden ring that had been on his finger, and threw it into the darkness of the raging uh, wind and rain. That ring was struck by lightning at the twinkling gold for an instant disappeared. Kazo watched it go, grinning both broadly and furiously. I don't think I'll lose. You are mine forever. The rain that canceled the thrown became a single gold butterfly fluttered around in the wind and rain. It headed for the rose garden almost as though it was being guided there. It then found the figure of the golden witch and fluttered down. When it came down right in front of Beatrice, it burst open and returned to its original form, flying through the air. The way it was going, you would expect it to fall into a puddle, but it stopped suddenly in midair, almost as if some transparent person had caught it. Apparently, even Beatrice hadn't expected this. However, she realized what, no, who it was and grinned broadly at it. Oh, God, who's this now? And as she did the show, the person who had caught the ring began to fuzzily appear. It was the figure of a young man wearing a butler's uniform embroidered with the one-winged eagle crest. There was no man like this among the servants of the Ishmael family. Even so, Beatrice laughed as though it was someone she remembered fondly. Ronov, Ronov, is it? It's been quite some time. It seems you've remembered me. You were always a man who took laurels too seriously. It's been quite some time since your last correspondence. Not for a single day have I, Rona, forgotten that I serve you, my lady. I was more afraid that you've forgotten about me. After all, you can be quite forgetful. Cackle, cackle. I see, yes, I am certainly forgetful. I haven't forgotten your sarcasm until I heard it again. My lady, take this. With an exaggerated yet elegant gesture, he bowed respectfully and headed out to Beatrice, the head string that he just caught. Is the Ushiramir family head's ring returned to you from Ushiramir Kinzo? Is now once again in the possession of its master. Indeed, this is Kinzo announcing the start of the game. Of course, I'll accept it. So, how shall we play tonight? Shall I prepare the roulette immediately, or shall I prepare some black tea first? I can decide which, but first, I need you to greet someone. I'm sure that the guy's got his mouth hanging open and can't shut it. Right, Battler? Greetings. How allow me to introduce myself. I am called Ronov, and I served as the side of Milady Beatrice. It is truly a pleasure to meet you. See, his mouth hanging open, and he can't shut it, right? Cackle, cackle. Yeah, I know shit. Another incomprehensible guy just showed up. First, I grumble about head goat-headed people doing the bond dance, and then goat heads start showing up in swarms. And since then, not only have those eyes, I mean, have not only have those seven ass knee sends appeared, but now there's even a butler. It doesn't make sense. Cut it out. By the way, Battler, did you notice? Did you realize that meeting him was a true devil's proof? A devil's proof? What do you mean? He may not look like it, but this guy's one of the 72, a genuine demon. In other words, I brought a demon right in front of me, which truly proves that they exist. Kako Kako of Ronov holds a noble rank in hell. The 27th highest ranked great demon. He's a pretty useful man. I summoned him at high cost and made him serve me. It is an honor to meet you. While my name is amongst those of the nobles in hell, I now serve as the head furniture of Beatrice Sama, who, despite being a vulgar human, is a great witch of such caliber that demons flee before her. Cackle, cackle, he's a very useful man, but he's impudent with his words. Frustratingly enough, he sometimes forgets to respect his master. Nothing in my context specifies the manner in which I am to speak. Would you like to change that contract? It keeps me entertained, so it's fine. Cackle, cackle. Beatrice turned her back to him, cackling. After bowing once to her, her back, Ronov turned back to Battler and stuck his hand right, showing off an innocent smile. Normally, this would mean that he was asking for a handshake. What is this supposed to be? I'm another, oh, I am another who has been subjected to Milady's whims. In that sense, I am sure we could become good friends. There's a handshake of friendship. Of course, there's no way it implies you're entering into a contract with a demon, so fear not. Sorry, but I'm right in the middle of a big fight with your master. I only shake hands with an enemy after we've beaten each other up in a rainy schoolyard, all worn out. Like when you see the teen drama, remember that. I see. The shake hands with the battle somehow must create a fitting atmosphere in a suitable location. 
exchange your sweet words and physical language with you that rings true to your heart. When the opportunity arrives, I shall arrange for such an encounter. I must say I'm simply to I simply love situations like that myself. Coo -coo -coo -coo. As Ronov laughed heartily, he whispered to Battler, bringing his face so close that their noses were almost touching. Battler, his face turning red after getting so close to another of the same sex, pushed him away. Hey, you're a creepy bastard. I see just right for Beatrice Butler. It's an honor to receive such words of praise. I'm very confident in my tea brain ability, so please look forward to tea time. Baking cookies is one of my hobbies, so please feel free to request any snacks you may desire. Just what I expect from a pair of the same gender, as you started to gain along well right off the bat. I'm jealous. My, my. Apologies for my Can you jealous, my lady. I shall not sneakily snatch your guest away from you. Well, then, I will leave for now to retake my post as head furniture and greet my subordinates. Please forgive my short absence. Indeed, only the common goats and the seven sisters used for the ceremony have manifested themselves. You will be able to finish greeting them in no time. Oh, those slightly seven sisters are here. I wonder if those nine girls have grown a little more graceful. He, <laughs> if that's graceful, I'll doubt the definition of the word graceful. Is that so? Then I suppose you've already had the opportunity to play with those sisters. Judging by your flesh, anyway, seem they're just as naughty as always, even though I'm not always, even though I am always telling them not to act more fitting as servants of Beatrice Sama, more troublesome kids. If that's your problem, don't worry, they actually act perfectly fitting for their master. Cackle, cackle, not even you have begun to say it. However, a conversation means that you accept your partner. The fact that you started to respond to my idle chatting proves that you are gradually starting to accept my existence. Hey, that's because even if the sun starts rising in the west, I'll definitely absolutely never accept that you're a witch. You might want to try a more positive approach like crying and kissing my shoes. Even if Battler's bluffing, he still spoke forcefully, a fearless expression on his face. The witch and her brother snickered together, realizing that their guests had regained more than enough of his willpower to attend a new game, and had preparations were complete. After Ronov exchanged a few words to Beatrice, he bowed silently to Battler, scattered to several gold butterflies, and disappeared. Cackle, cackle, it's truly pleasing to have such a boisterous atmosphere. How boring were the days when I trapped alone on the island, unable to regain my power and lacking anyone to talk to. I get that unpleasant guy is really fitting as your butler. But tell me, why has that butler only appeared now? You said something about how only the goats and each other, the stem and stakes, had manifested themselves. What did that mean? Indeed, you still resist, but I'm a fully fledged witch, and the contact with several non human entities in the spirit world. Uh, bet, so I'm saying, no same people would hang out with you, it was for some goat monsters. You know, it's asking any chance, and this time a demon's butler showed up. I had to think about it, but the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if even more weird people appeared. <laughs> Among the furniture that I work at my golden, great golden mansion, how many demons do you think want to come over and play? They'll keep coming, many of them will appear. When the door to the Golden Land is open, I will call back all my furniture and build my new castle here in Okinjima. And I plan to invite all of my old friends who will drink and dance together for three days and three nights. Of course, I also plan to invite Kenzo's family and you, you, and you see. You too, if you wish. Cackle, cackle. So, if this is what you mean, that since you lost your power for a long time, you couldn't summon them. And then since your magic and power has been gradually increasing, you've been kind of able to summon more and more monsters. It is as you say, you stop the hair's breath before crumbling, but your heart is always, oh, it's already wavering, and you're unable to deny that I'm a witch. That wavering in your heart has been slowly restoring my power to a witch. So you're trying to say that creepy butler appeared because I started to surrender? That's right, bit by bit you are surrendering to me. That's not the humiliation you suffered in the last game. It resulted in submitting to me so deeply. Wasn't that great when you get to sacrifice your back for the stick of my feet? Cackle, cackle. Dumb, damn it. I thought I'd be able to keep things as they were as long as I didn't accept you. But it looks like that was wrong. Correct. The closer you get to surrendering, the more the game will be swinging in my favor. Isn't chess the same? In the process of cornering each other's keys, we chase several pieces. Of course, I still haven't cornered your king. And furthermore, you're giving everything you've, just, everything you've got just to help your king escape and let lost several pieces to me as well as a large advantage. It's only natural that the further developments will tend to turn in my favor. Damn. From now on, you will probably be frantic as you try to avoid my checkmate. However, as you do, I will steal pieces from you one by one. In the end, you'll have lost everything but your key, and you won't be able to escape no matter how much you try. Then you will receive a true checkmate. You were talking big last time, weren't you? Something about you never accept me and would torment me with eternal torture. Only witches who have reached the endless level can talk about eternity. Has it been beyond you ever since the very beginning? Cackle, cackle. <laughs> K. 
Kenzo Sama has already been publicly displayed the location of the gold hidden gold within the epitaph on the Mark Fortress. The rules apply equally to all who can read the epitaph. Uh, if you discover the gold, I shall return everything to you. Tonight, I ask you that you enjoy your battle of ways with Kenzo Sama to the fullest. I sincerely pray that this night will be both intellectual and elegant. Beatrice the Golden. When Maria finished reading the letter that Beatrice had handed her, everyone was at loss for words for a while. And they all broke silence at once. Ridiculous. What a worthless, vicious prank. Seriously, there is no way Father gave up the heads for Aunt Beatrice. Ha, huh, what a transparent pride cup that confused us just by bringing up that name. Hey, hey, who filled this dessert up with a little too much punch? I want to applaud and praise you, so I'm clean, okay, Rosa? Of course not. I wouldn't have pulled a prank by assuming Father's name. Then Anarchy, Anarchy? Me, are you an idiot? It was Nissan, right? Only he could play something this vulgar. Are you trying to mock me? I'm the one who wants to question you. Who is behind this ill-natured prank? Cross beat the table and stared at everyone, since that included the children, too. He scared at most of them. A letter from a mysterious person who claims to have been given full rights to father's assets. Considering that the whole point of this family conference is a discussion of the subject, I think it's too hasty to call this a mere prank. We can't be sure. But maybe it really is one of father's shitty pranks. He might have planned this to shock us. A bit since we've been discussing the distribution of his inheritance without him. If that was the one who planned this, then we can't take what Maria Chen just read out aloud as a joke, right? That's right. If you inter if you inter interpret the contents literally, then this is a test from Father. The epitaph of the which had been displayed in the hall for quite some time now, so that any of us could solve it. There was plenty of notice. That means he was saying that the first person to solve this will be handed the inheritance along with all his wealth, right? See, my magic granted your wish. Nothing so foolish could possibly be the case. It's an unshakable fact that my husband is a successor to the Ushirami family headship. Well, that doesn't let her shake that up. Wait, shut her. Wait, doesn't that let her shake that? This is the message from the person who has given full rest of all the father's wealth. Nissan's right to become the head of his return to the blank state. Slight. The person who solves this riddle, the person who finds Beach's gold, become the next head of the Ushirami family. Ridiculous. Do you think we could trust the meaningless words in that letter that show it's a real thing? There was no way we could trust that. Then let's go try to ask Father directly. At this point, you can't get away with saying he's grumpy or feeling bad, right? The sealed wax clearly shows that this was from Father's representative. If you doubt that, then show some proof in his son. Show that this letter does not contain Father's will. Very well. This is just as you say. It no longer matters whether Father's in a good mood or not. Let's go up and ask him directly. Let's do it. We'll ask Dad directly. Dad is Dad, so why would he act in such a roundabout way? And again, I guess that would be like him. I wonder if we really should continue this discussion on the assumption that this letter came from Father. Stupid Rosa, it isn't obviously from Father that letter is Father's. It isn't obvious that he's given the four of us an even chance to become the successor. Die, you brainless idiot. Spoiler, so it really is time to only just giving up and die. I'm sorry that that's right, I'm sorry. In the beginning, the adults had all doubted the credibility of the letter, but after realizing that this was once in a lifetime chance and the inheritance struggle for the three year. And for the three younger siblings, Eva changed her position, claiming that the letter was authentic. Rudolph and Rosa caught on and agreed. Outrageous! How can adults like you take such a worthless prank seriously? I don't need to be, I don't need to be father than this in his contempt. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now, Susan, all we gotta do is ask father, and we're done, right? Won't everything be fine? Father just tells us that he doesn't know about the letter. Nissan, take responsibility and just like I'm just gonna say that he doesn't know about the letter. It's just no time to get scared just because he's in a bad mood, okay? He's so scared of a father at this age. That idiot, if only he'd just given up and die. Yeah, yeah, let's get this set up clearly. He's probably eating in the study right now. Let's have some set down the shop just for a moment. It's decided, let's go. It's, uh, Kari, wait here for a while. We'll go check whether it's true or not and come back quickly. Thank you. I'll wait patiently for Gota san to bring in the dessert. The four siblings, Natsuhi and Hideyoshi, are all rose from their seats forcefully and flew out in the hallway with a clatter. Afterwards, the only children stunned completely speechless. Nancho, who looked uncomfortable, and Kairi, who was just shrugged, were left. In the middle of all this, Mariah, who looked a little scared of the adult's sudden change, however, judging from appearance, she didn't look like she realized the full meaning of what she just read. What in the world was that all about? I don't get it. They're all bastards. They really want the inheritance that much. Everyone, this is our parents' problem. It has nothing to do with us, so you mustn't worry about it. Even if you say that, they were so blatant about it. 
I can't believe them showing off their greed like that. Ooh, everyone has to believe together that we'll be happy. Ooh, that's right. We all just promise. Come on, it better look kind of just got to shine you too. Huh. Yeah, I feel horrible. We couldn't accept it at all, but we laid down our arms this time being. We've been vaguely aware of how filthy this family conference was going to be. However, after that six year blank, I couldn't help being shocked. When he saw that, children were completely dejected. Nigel cleared his throat uncomfortably. It's an adult matter. It has nothing to do with all of you young people. Let us forget about that. I would if I could. I know it's hard, but forget it Forget it for now. All of your parents are fighting frantically to make sure your future is just a little brighter. Please don't look at your injured parents with those cold eyes when they come back. No matter how much you ask us, Kari, son, that will be tough. If we could be happy with an explanation like that, we could want to be kids. Ew, everyone be happy. Can't get dark. Believe. If anyone doesn't believe, we can be happy that happiness will get away. Everyone has to believe. Ooh. I'd like the son of that. I'll believe it, too. I'll believe we can find happiness. Ooh, Aunt Carrie, thank you. You better learn. Jessica, you believe, too. Beach is also saying that magic won't have any power if you don't believe. Ooh. Carrie, son, rose from her seat. Oh, sorry, guys. I didn't mean to skip it. Ooh, got Carrie, believe. Now, Batlin just got to believe. Those two are strong. They'll feel better soon. They'll believe. Yeah. More importantly, I want you to tell me something. My carrier son said that Jessica, George, and King, Dr. Nigel, and I listened closely. It looked like our parents were so concerned with their hands just probably that grandfather filled their minds, but we wanted to ask my right about something simpler. Ooh, what? Who gave you that letter? Beatrice. Remember what she drawn that portrait? Ooh. She gave this to me letter and an umbrella, and she used magic to fix my rose that was broken. Beatrice has an awesome way she can do anything. Could you tell us about that in more, more detail? Alright guys, I'm going to take a break here, and I will be back in a little bit. Okay guys, I am back. Um, without even being allowed to wait for dessert, we were chased out of the room. I heard that in the end, our parents were not able to get grandfather to respond. Well, I hate to say it, but I feel like living, like giving grandfather a high five right now. He's probably pretty satisfied with how strange this letter had given his children good shots as they had all been so infatuated with the inheritance problem with, while grandfather was still alive. Although, I also felt like the despicable parents had gotten with the dessert and all this confusion. But I couldn't really say that I was feeling great. I felt all sulky. Apparently, Grandfather hadn't seemed concerned with the whole thing. But he also hadn't denied anything about the letter, either. When I talking about the witch's letter, Grandfather's name kept popping up. If Grandfather knew that someone was stealing his name, then considering his character, he'd probably be mad with, with rage. I mean, even though Grandfather knew, uh, uh, now knew the contents of that letter, he coldly ignored it. So that kind of was a silent yes. Yeah, and even they were trying to inter-tip the letter in their favor. They're gritty, clearly visible. It wouldn't have mattered so much if those those all, but the adults who now start focusing on Mariah who received the letter, they kept pounding her with questions about who had given to her. Mariah repeated over and over again that she had gotten it from bitches, but there's no way such a mysterious person could sneak onto this island. And so this island's small, and there's uh, no one living on it outside the issue of me, a family household. Mariah kept repeating that she had gotten it from me, just no matter how many times she was asked. The adults seemed to think she was trying to trick them, so they didn't hold back and question her until she broke it into tears. Mariah was released. She, she sobbed all worn out from crying. And after our parents ordered us to go to the guest house and take Mariah with us, they shut themselves up in the dining hall and started getting louder and louder as they discussed their inheritance. It seemed that because of the strange letter, Uncle Cross chose to become the next sad might have been reduced to a blank slate. In exchange for accepting him, my dad and the rest were trying to swindle Uncle Kraus a lot of a lot of money or something like that. Discussed as we were, just got now we're happy to move over to the guest house. We didn't want to be under the same roof as those filthy adults their heads so filled with thoughts about money. George and Nicky pleaded on our parents' behalf, saying that he wanted us to understand them. I understood his reasoning. No matter how filthy this talk of money was, it wouldn't go away if you just closed your eyes to it. But even so, how could they seek so low to overly fly over the money of the dead? La 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 la. Oh, there we go. Mariah had cried herself dry and was hiding in her bed. She didn't even twitch. She even she hadn't even twitched for a while, so she was probably sleeping. Who in the world gave that letter to Mariah Chan? The George Nissan, you couldn't ask her that anymore. Is it even fun to say that Mariah got it beaches and leave it at that? 
After all, we don't want to make her cry any more than this, even though we said that we could clear away a gloomy feeling. And there are only two people in the asylum now, though we thought that someone in the rain and 19th birthday gave Mariah Chen a letter and is now hiding somewhere. It doesn't seem realistic at all. Most likely, somebody got Shannon or someone to put on a dress with that portrait and cleverly got Mariah to go along with the story. Though in Mariah's case, just saying the dress would probably convince her that it really was Beatrice. Maybe it doesn't really matter who handed her over the letter. The important thing is who sent it. The point is that the grandfather wanted to cause an uproar by assuming the name of the witch. Seriously, that old geek just got good at rounding people up. The most likely answer is that her occult loving grandfather was playing around. I need to let over that Mariah, who shared the same hobby as he does in such a dramatic way. No, he felt to give any thought for that what Mariah would have to go through, making it a pretty shitty thing to do. Seriously, messing around with Mariah's pure heart, it doesn't matter who handed the letter over. Mariah says she got it from Beatrice, so let's treat it that way. I agree, let's do that. To Mariah, and Beatrice, it's kind of like what Santa Claus is to most kids. Whether we're dealing with some non existent nasty person or Santa Claus, as long as we acknowledge them, the at least exists the same Mariah, I see I guess it could be important to lie to a child to, child to protect their dreams. Mm, what's up, Jessica? Are you still angry? Jessica had her hand on her chin as though there was something that she just couldn't understand. When I called out to her, she came to her senses. Ah, sorry. Well, actually, I was wondering if Mariah might have actually met Beatrice. What do you mean by that? Are you saying this is the 19th person on this island? If you truly take Mariah's chance, worse the heart, then you would arrive at that answer. No, that's not what I meant. I'm talking about the story that someone we don't know has been living on this island since long ago. Let me you say, where? In the forest. Oops. I think I broke the cherry somewhere. I need a new computer chair. I <laughs> had so broken. It's unsuitable. Um, is this gonna go on? There we go. Okay, there we go. The dolls were gathered in the dining hall, spending a very long time continuing the discussion that had been started by Beatrice's letter. Cross Charlin claimed that the letter was a simple prank, but he couldn't overturn the claim that Kinsel failure to deny the letter was an answer enough. Judging by Kinsel's character, if he knew that a letter had been written in his name, he would be mad with rage. Since all of the siblings knew that Cross had no choice but to withdraw his claim. Without even trying to summarize it, the contents of the letter was simple. The person who could solve the witch's epitaph would receive the headship and assets. This did a lot of damage across him and showed that he would receive the headship. And it was better than news and it was better news than the rest of them who had given up already. Good have hoped for. However, there are some points that were then the person who saw the epitaph was not limited to a member of the Shumi family. Taking literally anyone, no matter how doubtful their origin, might receive the headship. And furthermore, this meant there was a chance that all of the Ushomiya family assets would be stolen by some unknown person. In essence, there's definitely not a situation where even the other siblings could afford to lower their guard. Had this letter come from an assassin sent by Kinsel calling themselves Beatrice, or was this the scheme of some unknown person trying to steal the Ushomiya family's wealth? If so, they didn't know the truth. But they could say one thing for certain. Mara had received this problemat problematic letter today on this island. In other words, someone planned something to do with that letter was on this island today. Yeah, I mean, set up by Kenzo, one of the four siblings. Or maybe some unknown person, no matter how much they suspect, suspected each other, they couldn't, couldn't reach a conclusion. After getting tired of bickering with each other, they finally reached the extremely obvious conclusion that doubting each other was just a waste of time. We made no progress. We're just spinning our wheels. That's right, and the mere fact that you realize it means we won't have it waste more any time. It's not certain that Father sent the letter. My husband is merely ex expired by your inability to hold a conversation. Who's unable to hold a conversation? You keep yelling at me every time I say something. Do you truly think that's such a shameful behavior? It's fitting for a member of the Ushimiya family. Would you give it a rest, Eva? You two, Natsuhi san. The topic's finished for now. Shall we cool, all cool our heads off for now? Let's have some. Cool drinks brought over. That sounds good. It would probably be wiser if we cooled our heads. Don't you want to take a short break too, dear? Anaki looks like she's in a bad mood, so I'll pass on that break. But I agree about the cool drinks. Rosa has someone bring some water. A whole pitcher. Yes, understood. Rosa headed over to the extension telephone in the corner of the room and called the servant room. 
she then passed on the, what Rudolph had told her to the person on the other end. The vicious bickering up until now had vanished as though it had been a lie. As silence continued until Gota finished standing the table and retreated from the room. Is there anything else that you require? No, please leave us. Yes, and if you will excuse me, if you need anything, call on me at any time. After listening to the sound of Gota's footsteps disappear off into the distance, Eddie went to take a deep breath at the same time to break the tension. It sure is running hard. I wonder if the scientist person is taking shelter in the Rose Garden of War about now. I'm sure it's running hard. I wonder if the next person is taking shelter in the Rose Garden Arbor about now. I wonder. I think I just reread that. My bad, guys. I'm getting tired, so, you know. Blah, blah. I wonder if they might be able to escape the rain there, but it would be quite cold. I am mystery person... Not this person as a visitor. It's just pretty inter interesting, just like a mystery novel. Normally, in that kind of story, it's a safe bet that the person doesn't exist, that one of the 18th will be faking it. I suspect Genji and the others, just as I thought it would be, have been better if it had been dismissed, all of the servants of the one week eagle, no matter what excuses we had to make. Come, I don't say that we must be grateful for the long years of service. Of course, we can't let our guard down. I'm sure you agree to any son that whether or not father was behind us, the person who MRI that letter was a servant. Indeed, in any event, we were all being friendly in our big happy circle until dinner, weren't we? All of us siblings have alibis. Only a servant could have handed him right that letter. While well, all the servants said that they were too busy with the bed, making them any spare time during which they could go to give Mariah Chen in the, in the Rose Garden. A uh, go to Mariah, okay. Hey, we should have said that, and you weren't saying that the Witch of the Forest bitch just someone came over and actually handed him right that letter, are you? <laughs> Rosa, you believe in that so much, it really frightened you, right? Don't tell me you still believe at this age in the Witch of the Forest. If she did exist, I'd love for her to appear, but no matter how much I wish, she didn't appear before me even once. Ah, uh, she didn't even save me from my crisis. Of course not. I just thought that all, since all of us, 18 of us, said we couldn't, didn't do it, there only might be a 19th person. That can't be in the first place. We were the only ones who came in on the boat. We didn't see any mysterious stranger riding with us. You don't think they could have swum across this rough sea, right? I can't really imagine it. <laughs> Logically, that's true. It's difficult to imagine that there's a single hidden unavided guest on this isolated island. However, it looks like some of us still can't abandon the possibility completely, right? Hideyoshi laughed it off, saying that there couldn't be a 19th person, but Kari has sensitively picked up on the delicate atmosphere among the four siblings. In a normal situation, there shouldn't have been any uninvited guests on a small isolated island. How would they have come here? From where? Where were they hiding? And why had they appeared only even though they had sent a letter in their name? Not they could explain that, but not only had the four siblings not joined in on the deal she's laughing, they also seemed unplayable, completely denying their hearts of the possibility of a 19th person. Kyra san please don't misunderstand. It's not as though we believe in anything like that fairy tale, Legend of the Witch. Is there another topic to insult father? Simply speaking of which, a stain is a betrayal against them. Skiggle giggle, I wonder. However, this is father we're talking about. It could be possible, right? I don't know anything. Oh, what's this? What's this? Why has everyone gotten so gloomy? What are you all talking about? In short, the legend of the witch isn't a joke, but a fact that's ridiculous. <laughs> of course, nobody believes that some witch right in the broom and flying in the sky. If the woman in that porch, a beach just might actually have existed on this island. He knows she sounds looks like we aren't talking about a witch, but something a little simpler. So it must be something like this. Everyone suspects that Father had a mistress named Beatrice secretly living somewhere on this island. Is that it? Father was always exemplary at the keeping strictly to the rules. It's completely inconceivable that he would bring something so filthy onto this island. And that's who he stopped at them immediately, but it looked like the four siblings, including Cross and agree. On the contrary, they appeared to think Kenzo wouldn't even have hesitated to do something like that. From the beginning, it had been whispered that Kenzo had built a mansion on the island specifically because of the existence of that interest in the, interest in the mistress. I'm sorry, Nasu, son. I know how much you expect to have it. That room has been around for a long time. All the buildings on Rokujima were built by dead on his own, but people have always guessed he had some contraption or secret room set up in the mansion that only he knew about. And we always whispered that he was somewhere on this island. There's a secret mansion none of us know about. I see. This is island map. Look small on the map, but it's quite large for just the Ushimaya family to live on. So people have suspected that he built a secret mansion somewhere in the uncivilized forest for his mistress to live in. That would be quite a large-scale scheme. In the beginning, people thought there might be somewhere hidden inside this mansion. There might be a hidden basement with a fabulous hidden room. 
with a witch in that portrait was secretly hiding. After seeing that intricate auto lock on that study, it isn't too hard to imagine, alright? After all, Father did spread the rumor that a large amount of gold was hidden somewhere by some mechanism. I wouldn't be surprised if there existed some hidden room inside this very mansion that none of us knows about yet. When Mother was alive, she would often score the entire mansion searching for Father when he was anywhere to be found. Mother also suspected what Rudolph just said. She believed there was a hidden door of the stairway somewhere, and that his blonde-haired mistress was hidden behind it. It's hard to believe, but there are some actual examples in other contra- uh, countries of people cheating with someone over a period of several decades by making them live in that hidden attic room. Furthermore, I can't let him mention this extravagant. It is possible to suspect the existence of a hidden room. From what I've heard, the legend of Rokunshima Witch, which is a fairy tale, made up to scare children away from the uncivilized forest. But it, it's starting to sound like there's a little more to the story. Well, as you know, this lonely island without anything but the Ushirimi mansion on it. When Rosa and I were little brats in stormy nights, we got so scared by the sound of the trees rustling in the direction of the forest. We had this crazy delusion that something weird might be looking out from us between those trees. It's only natural for our breath to think of stuff like that. But when Rosa and I complained about it, some people figured it was more than a breath's imagination. Is that right, Anarchy? Yeah, Nissan and I thought you might have coincidentally spotted Father's mistress. Then we named Circusy at the Solomon as she went out for a walk when no one was looking. Of course, Mother felt the same. Even amongst the older, older servants, she often heard about the ghost story about how the witch of the portrait wanders the mansion that night. Outwardly, I laughed it off as just a gross ghost story on the inside. I suspected that very much that it hinted the existence of the hidden mistress. In that case, you're saying that the existence of an active person might not be completely ridiculous. They might actually be somewhere around here. Sounds like one of those devil proofs Rudolph's always talking about. It might be possible to prove that there is an active person, but it's impossible to prove that an active person doesn't exist. Shall we continue this discussion under the assumption that there's an active person named Beatrice, uh, that there's a person named Beatrice hiding somewhere on this island? That's a good plan from the perspective of risk management, but it's probably much more prudent to say she might exist rather than saying she couldn't exist. I see. Sorry, I was a bit careless. Rose is sorry for laughing just now. Ah, uh, it's fine, I don't mind. He does apologize deeply for making that worst case scenario lightly despite calling himself the president of a company. Sons fall again. Preparing for the existence of a 19th person would mean an effect acknowledging the presence of some unknown person hidden on this island. Since this person might be playing something shady, it was only natural that the conversation would turn into an ominous direction. In the past, Father would sometimes suddenly disappear without telling anyone where he went. After all, he was a man who valued silence. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't have been out of the ordinary for him to shut himself up in some library room after purposely not telling anyone where he was going. However, when the witch theory was slowly refined into theory by his mistress, people eventually whispered that he was secretly going back and forth to see her. Mom was totally paranoid in the last year. She sometimes suddenly started making a fuss, asking the servants to start looking for dead immediately because of some urgent situation. Yes, that did happen sometimes. Mother was always doing things like that in her later years, and that frightening atmosphere still hasn't gone away. I couldn't say it for certain now. She was a person that'd be pitied. So then what happened in those large-scale searches of the house? Did they find anything? No, Father was caught, wasn't caught foolishly in a hidden room even once. So always after a long period of time had passed, he was selling shoe up somewhere. Then he said that he was taking a nap in some library room, or that the wind had summoned him to take a walk on the beach. But it was always some place where the servants had already looked. We never knew where Father had gone, even at the time Grandfather was famous for his occult inc- inclinations. So some of the servants exaggerated, saying that he might have returned into a butterfly as a dance around the rose garden. So in short, Father frequently disappeared and no one knew where he went. Yeah, since we couldn't find him, no matter how much we looked inside the mansion, we got more and more sure that Dad might have been somewhere outside. But the area outside the mansion isn't large at all, which leaves only the forest. If we tie that in the legend of the with the legend of the witch, you get a theory like this. Father actually built a hidden mansion somewhere in the forest inside of which a mistress by the name of Beatrice lived, and she sometimes went to see her. I was also young at the time. I was so eager to find where the father was having his affair at one time. I followed him when he went outside. And of course, as a failure, every time father went out, he was oddly intent on avoiding places where he might be seen, and was extremely careful to prevent anyone from spotting him. And he was actually not in like extraordinarily in earnest in his attempts to do so, but that actually made me sure he must have been going out for some reason that the members of his family couldn't know about. And that'd be going to meet his mistress, probably trying to avoid to be seen. He often seen Hideyoshi nod and say, yes, yes, 
And so it was quite obvious he even got a little sullen. Well, anyway, this island was like a sketchbook in which father was this Western obsession could draw out all of his dreams. Everything about this island was exactly how father wanted it. It wouldn't be odd at all if there was a hidden mansion somewhere for his mistress to live in. He was where he spoke for what all the siblings had come to think. For a while, the room returned to silence again, and everyone listened to their sound of the wind and rain. There was a hidden mansion on the south, and had Kansas mistress been living there and hiding for a long time? Everyone thought they were being too suspicious, and they hesitated for a long time without speaking. But everyone had shared a common opinion. Kyrie had been listening to the whole time with their eyes closed, spoke to no one in particular. How long has this rumor had about father's mistress been around? As soon as we moved to this island about 30 years ago, after all, it probably wouldn't have been impossible for him to have a mansion built while we were here. People have been through it, so I've been going in and out. It had been exposed quickly. So if, people, so if it was possible, it happened before we moved here. It probably could have been built along with his mansion when we were still living in Odawara. Since father had been set up a double life with his family and his mistress, it's probably reasonable to assume that he had all planned from the beginning. And his relationship with his mistress probably went back to the days when we lived in Odawara. Odawara, okay. Probably, as the father says, she is the source of the vast amount of gold he used to gain the funds that resurrected the Ishirami family. We could probably conclude that they had a close relationship with this Odawara. Our relationship trusting enough for her to lend him a vast quantity of gold. I can't even imagine how old our relationship must have been. Perhaps father gave her some kind of valuable advice for seeing in business. It's natural to think that I have a sense of gratitude for that. It's worth to give father the gold. If you think about it that way, it's obvious that they would have a close relationship after that. Rather than that festering relationship with the mistress, he would probably have a relationship with a gratitude to a person who said they should be a family from his crisis. I don't know if what not Suhi's so son saying it's a ring of truth or to it or not. But even in that case, is that building a golden hidden mansion and having their life in it and going a bit too far? Does that mean they feel a bit more than gratitude? Well, then, this is all just speculation in the first place. No one's ever found the hidden mansion. Anaki, you were planning on expanding this island into a resort, right? As you were doing that, didn't you manage to stumble upon it by chance, did you? Maybe you even bumped into some gold there, too. <laughs> you think Rukunjima's a treasure island or something? Don't play dumb. You know, that although, that, although you say you're opening a resort, you really are planning to investigate the entire island, right? Just about all the trouble on confusion we were talking about earlier. You haven't been very successful, have you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's a misunderstanding. Isn't it perfectly natural that investigating this island would be the first step in turning it into a resort? Cross tried to play down, but he was plainly obviously to his siblings, who knew him so well. Cross was definitely of the ex sure of the existence of a hidden mansion, and under the pretense of opening a resort, he had been closely investigating the island, searching for a clue as to the location of the hidden gold. They couldn't tell whether that conviction was just him overthinking things, or whether it was based on some physical proof. So Cross was. With all this guy, I was sure that was enough proof for the other siblings to be sure, too. The story about a witch living in a forest is obviously a fairy tale, but the story about some blonde haired girl living in secretly in a mansion no one knows about in the middle of the forest isn't much better. That's right, there really wouldn't be just like a fairy tale. You like those, don't you, Rosa? Uh oh, well. Well, then the mansion is built on the sun, and father was at the height of his prosperity. With this money, he could probably attain anything and make any of his wild imagination imaginings real. A man in mansion in the forest where a witch quietly waits. It sounds like the kind of situation father would like, doesn't it? Like something from the cult or a fairy tale? It feels like that's kind of hobby. On an island, I wish that you should me a family had lived for 30 years now. A hidden mansion that no one knew about had quickly built a house of witch about whom nothing was known except could be guessed from a portrait. You know, this has to be thrown together theory it might not be a completely delusional considering all the kinds of strange habits in his past wealth oh man my eyes are burning this chapter needs to end uh, it might have been possible for our father to end up the what it might have not been possible for father to build a hand and mention to satisfy his dreams however let's be realistic would it be possible to have possible to house his beloved woman in a hidden mansion for decades without becoming inconvenient well if there was love it would have been doable right Think of the facilities needed to let his beloved woman live in health, healthily in a way that would satisfy father. For example, even if it was on a small scale, it would have to be an intricate and pleasant residence. It would probably need to have electricity, gas, running water, maintain as well as some people didn't see her needs. Even cooking would be quite difficult. She would need clothes and makeup, the daily necessities. The needs of a woman aren't simple. Would it be possible to maintain all that without any of the family or servants noticing? When you say it that way, it sure sounds like a weak point in our theory. But that is and not to get rid of my feelings. I might have been able to do it anyway. After all, that we're, that we're talking about. That's right. It's our father. 
If I were the one to succeed in the end of war, he would have succeeded no matter what. Sin has something that would be difficult for a normal person, and therefore impossible doesn't apply when it comes to father. Indeed, you should never underestimate father. Father's madness can't be understood by normal people. I wouldn't put in the, the, I wouldn't put it past that kin, so as long as you stick to that phrase, a considerable amount of credibility can dwell in any absurd story. However, that didn't cause the importance of what Kari has said to waver. This is a difference from stealthily raising a kitten in a cardboard box and keeping it in the secret from your parents. Taking care of a person in a secret over a period of 30 years would be an incomparably massive task. After all, father's legend of the golden star, gold star before he gained possession of Kunjima. That means his relationship with the mistress was over 30 years long. How old would that make her? In the worst case, she could be as old as, as older, right? By the age, the body starts to break down. I don't care what the mansion's like. I wouldn't use the word agreeable to describe living in a place where people's eyes can't reach, almost like she was under house arrest. That's right. If what father told us about Beatrice is true, then the relationship had lasted over 30 years. She might have been a charming young woman at the time, but it probably makes sense to assume she's an old back like us now. I can easily imagine that, given the contents of that letter, you should talk. He he he. Cross thought there's nothing this applied to him. Of course, he was offended, but she didn't strike back. Quit it, Anarchy. So, everything was thinking is true, then she should be joining in on Dad's inheritance problem with her head held high. After all, there's a good chance that her love was mutual, unlike with Mom. Even if she knows she's a mistress, she might also be proud to be his true wife. That is an insult to mother. Yeah, sorry. However, if they, everyone knows that it was a political marriage to set on the elders among his relatives. Because of that, it definitely wouldn't be strange for Dad to have a mistress. The family sank after the Great Kansas earthquake, and Father was upset that Ushimi and family had it against his will. However, in the beginning, it is the elders. Their relatives treated Kenzo like a dummy and influenced him powerfully, almost like he was a puppet. He wasn't permitted to decide anything by himself, not even his marriage partner. And it was since that he met that golden witch Beatrice in those distant days, Kenzo's legend of the gold was quickly embellished into something dramatic. In other words, it could mean that Kenzo really did find a woman he loved. If she also knew the whole story, even if they weren't marriage partners, it wouldn't have been off for her to consider herself his true wife inside her heart. And now the person who registered as his true wife is already dead. Which means she might feel confident stake in her claim. If not for just the righteous assets, but they're regarding the battle over the head chip too. I see. I'm starting to see the purpose of this letter. That ship goes to the one who sold the grilled epitaph. Is that what it means? Even if the mistress is added to the family ranking system, she isn't the relative father, so she'd be inferior even to the children. In other words, she'd be one step below Rosa in rank. That wouldn't be a good position to enter the battle for the headship from. I see, so that's it. If someone gets all the riches riddle, they get the headship regardless of rank. In other words, it's the most advantage advantageous condition bitches could possibly get, since she's not, got no chance of otherwise. A revival of the extremely family was made possible by the gold bitches that had bestowed. It was quite a distinguishing service she had provided. She had built the wealth together with Kenzo, so it's natural she would think of herself as the one who should inherit it. It would also be natural for her to despise the thoughts of giving up to the children the wife Kenzo never loved. How could she be so imprudent even if such a mission as she exists? Joining in on a battle for the rights of the head's inheritance would be a reckless action far above her place. What disregard for her own position? Now she turned red, her first quivering. She also came into the extremely a family register due to complicated circumstances. Those who knew that understood more or less why she was so angry for the sake of Kenzo's dead wife. Well, thanks to that rec reckless action of her, she... We all have even chance now, right? Father has even given it a silent approval. Will that person who was a Caesar Jamir family be his mistress Beatrice or one of us or the relatives he doesn't love? Maybe he wants to make us struggle over that to see who's worthy. As he giggled roguishly, cross shrugged his shoulders and looked away. However, since she's the one who brought this rule to light in the first place, maybe that means it gives her a significant advantage. That's right. In the first place, if Beatrice meant the letter literally, then she's father's alchemist. In other words, she's the manager of his gold. It wouldn't be strange at all if she knew where we're sitting, would it? Is it that harsh? It's like she's giving us a riddle she knows the answer to. She'll probably show up rudely say, Hey, here's the answer. I'll take the headship now and slash everything away from us. That's right. The person who brings up the riddle always knows the answer. There's a good chance that this is a whole trap to steal everything from us. 
if you think about it like that, then you start to doubt whether she really had any gold in the first place. Why would she tell us about it? All she has to do is keep quiet and embezzle it. It really is strange. That certainly was the case. If the epitaph showed the way to the hidden gold, why would she challenge them to try and solve it? If they actually did solve it, wouldn't the gold be stolen from her? Could be that this person is trying to stir up the siblings so they solve the epitaph and then plan to steal away at the last second? It was an extremely logical possibility. No. If it's been a chessboard around, there might be a pretty good chance that they actually do have the gold. Why are you so certain? Wait, Anarchy. Carrie, please keep talking. Why do you think that? After all, do they really think we'll let go of the Ushimiya family headship just because someone tells us the answer to the riddle and the witch's epitaph? Well, now we'll be so impressed by the answer that we'll just give up. Well, that's true. No one, no way they're so naive that they assume we just give up after being told the answer to a riddle that just say, here you go, and hand it over. Of course, the headship of the Ushimiya family is nothing, it's not something that can be handed over so easily. I said exactly, no matter how Beatrice might one sidedly propose a game like this, and if she were so spectacularly to show us the answer, there's no way we'd obediently hand over the headship. In other words, unless she was compelling force in the form of challenges to a game with equal conditions for us all, this won't truly count as a game. You're right, unless the head losers had no choice but to give up on the headship because of a compelling force, this wasn't this really won't count as a game. And what might this compelling force be? Would they be bound to sudden change as I announced they're handing over the headship? I see, I get it. They just have to do something to make us want to give up headship willingly. Yes, I see, to do that, beat us up to their own ten tons of gold. I see, I get it too. In other words, it's a trade. Huh, what do you mean? A trade? Trade what? They show me a family headship for the hidden gold. Bitch, you surely plans to tell us the location of the tiny tons of gold and use that to bribe the game that you show me a family headset. Ridiculous. They want to trade the headship of the glorious Ushimiya family for money? That's blasphemy. Blasphemy against the Ushimiya family. Please listen without getting mad. How about, how about how much wealth does this glorious Ushimiya family have right now? Are we really that affluent? The definition of affluence is not dependent on property. It's about heart. Our financial situation has nothing to cross on her to Natsuhi as she started to go on and on emotionally. In a situation, the more she went on like that, the worse it would actually sound. Me aside, I hear your current situations are quite unfavorable. Oh, really? I've heard that your financial situations are really bad, too. Offering up more and more collateral for new money to gamble with, repeatedly dabbling in new gambles, unable to accept your losses. If we count what's going on behind the scenes, you're in even bigger financial straits than the rest of us. Just how much money have you lost, Nissan? You have no talent. Who are you saying has no talent? And what do you mean, financial straits? Now she became indignant, and once more, but Cross raised his hands again and interrupted her. It seems that you're making a small mistake. Business is not something that can be judged based on current and progress alone. For someone with a long-term outlook on business such as myself, it may sometimes appear at a glance that I have suffered significant short-term losses. And I keep we've kind of collecting the evidence your position right now is I want to be proud of. So what is this what Kyrie is trying to say? Every one of us has got money in trouble and bitches are 10 tons of gold. As the only person who knows the location of the 10 tons of gold, bitches is playing on us using it to force us to sell the headship. But how much is 10 tons of gold worth? A rough estimate is, say, 2 billion yen? No, 20 billion yen. With that much piled up, we'd be ecstatic to accept her as a successor. The scene returned to silence. In fact, the rain and the wind felt even noisier now. It's probably the sudden the windstorm racing through the insides of their mind. This isn't funny. I think we give up the headship to some woman of doubtful origin just because she had a little money stored up. Don't be so stupid. The headship wasn't even yours in the first place, right? We got nothing to lose and, nothing, and money to gain, and we'll calculate our profit and lose and loss. What's something worth listening to? They knew that Cross had eaten up much of the Ushimiya family assets, so it was drugs that remained of the inheritance versus the cost of being accepted as the head that preachers would pay. It's a shame, but honestly, the former was less enticing than the latter. Well, if I want to end up as four equal portions, since Enneke would be giving up his position as successor, his portion would have to be larger. It makes me feel kind of jealous, you know? Dear, the amount of money isn't the problem, right? Your cowardly younger siblings are trying to sell the glory of the Ushimiya family for money, don't you see? Why aren't you displaying your dignity as the oldest son? That's who he stayed quiet for a while. Dear. This is a, di is a dizzying proposal where we were each planning on getting 250 million yen out of Enneke. As it was treats us with the 10% of those 10 times, um, that's 2 billion. 
Yeah, that means we should treat us ten times our original go. Now that will be more than enough for us. It's not like I got any attachment to the issue of me or name. I'd be happy to sell it off. Even if it's ten times is a slightly optimistic figure. Yes, it'd still be fascinating to prospect for us. Whether or we're trying to form an alliance among the siblings to keep the South Southern called Beach South. But if this is our plan, it'll tell apart the unity between us. Yeah, by this point, we can say it clearly. The Gold Beach's letter was to disturb our alliance. If the three younger siblings who had never had anything to do with their inheritance were paid enough money to satisfy them, they would happily accept Beatrice as the next head. A moat had been dug all around Cross. In that case, the negotiations would be one on one between her and Cross. He tried to look strong, but Cross's financial and political situation was extremely weak. He might bluff in front of the siblings, but on the side, he was considering entering negotiations to pay out the sum of money involved. In order to bury, bury his losses, Cross had taken advantage of the fact that Kenzo had shut himself up in this room and had embezzled Kenzo's personal assets. Therefore, when Kenzo died and inheritance was distributed, Cross's situation would probably be investigated. But if he gave up on his head to Beatrice, she would also receive Rice's assets. As a result, the distribution, the distribu ah, distribution of the inheritance of the siblings would not occur. In other words, Cross's embezzlement might not have been known to of the siblings. Of course, the siblings were frightened of Kenzo, but it was doubtful whether they actually had respected him as a father. By this time, they had each their own families, their own wealth, and their own lives. If they paid enough money in exchange for Yokojima, the records of Kenzo's dreams, there was a significant likelihood that they relinquished the Ushomiya family name. In other words, Beatrice's victory was already guaranteed in this game, not the winner of the Beatrice's game, but the winner of Kenzo's game. When Kenzo was ordered, the epitaph be put on display, and until today, no one has solved it. So Beatrice solved it. In other words, this is less of a game, like Beatrice's declaration of victory. However, Kyrie still thought there might be a catch. If this was a declaration of victory, Beatrice would only have to display the gold openly state and intended by the inheritance. And yet she had gone all this trouble telling the siblings to try and solve the epitaph. Why did she set up this new game where she agreed to hand over the, all of the gold and inheritance to the epitaph of Solver? Kyrie tried spinning the chessboard around several times. When searching for the sort of ideal strategy, Beatrice might be after something that could lead this kind of thinking. In the end, she reached a single conclusion. Could it be her arrogance? Or maybe she's plain. What are you talking about? The witch has sent us a letter of a challenging a challenge of force to try to solve the epitaph. She might be taking it slightly, thinking we could never solve it. However, at the very least there ought to be an extremely small chance that we do solve it. After all, we have here four of his father's children by blood, right? The questionnaire called together four blood relatives who they tried frantically to work together and avoid those assets stolen from them. Might have come across the branch of the riddle by chance. The reason the witch had a superior position in neg negotiations compared to the siblings was not only she knew the location of the hidden gold, but if the heading place was exposed to someone other than her, the witch's advantage would crumble. A short Beatrice gains nothing but risk by writing this witch's letter of challenge. Of course, it might have the effect of splitting apart the siblings' alliance, but if that was her only go, why would she take this risk? However slight it might be, that seems reckless to me. But if, she, if we keep in mind that a certain type of promotion, that risk comes in co uh, co comprehensible. And you're saying it's arrogance? Yes, that's right. When people have an overwhelmingly advantage, they tend to get arrogant. And when they do, they want to show off that advantage to the loser, so they sometimes take on small risks. A moderate amount of risk adds a little spice to enjoy the victory. But it'd be boring to win without any risk. I understand. I like that kind of thing, too. Yeah, I understand it well. I thought of a few plausible explanations for the true motive behind Beatrice's letter. But I think this is really might be the truth. The emotion hidden behind that letter is arrogance. Arrogance. She's trying to throw her weight around, looking down on us. But if, if there's nobody could figure out such a difficult epitaph, it may be possible to surprise that the epitaph wasn't written by father, but by her. Sounds great. It's all the riddle of the epitaphs, she says. If only I solved it, I would be made head, right? I'll solve it. I'll accept the witch's challenge, as if those other siblings could solve it. Idiot siblings. I'll solve it by myself, and I'll prove that I'm the one who fits the seat the issue me a family. I'll take that challenge. I will solve the riddle. Okay, guys. Well, um, I'm going to end the video here. Um, and I will see you guys later.